Hi, this is Nick Dawson, the editor-in-chief of Talk House Film, and you're listening to the Talk House Film Podcast. Jesse Moss's The Overnighters became one of the buzz titles at Sundance this year, one of those films that people went into knowing very little and came out raving about. It's a documentary about Pastor Jay Renke, a priest who housed incoming workers in his church in Williston, North Dakota, a dot on the map that became a boom town thanks to the recent discovery of oil in the area. Surprising and compelling, the film reinforces, in the best way, the idea that truth is indeed stranger than fiction. When we were discussing doing a podcast, Moss suggested that he might chat with Josh Marston. The two met in 2005 at the McDowell Colony, where both were working on screenplays, and they've been friends ever since. More importantly, Marston, a former news journalist who's best known for his 2004 directorial debut, Maria Full of Grace, has a unique vantage point on the overnighters. While Moss was filming in Williston, Marston came out to report on the town for NPR's Planet Money. He stayed with Moss in Pastor Jay's church and saw firsthand the situation portrayed in the Overnighters, just as things were starting to unravel. Hey, Josh. Well, this is what happens when you text me. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm in for a full conversation. Um, I remember having lots of conversations with you about North Dakota, um, but I don't know, maybe it's interesting to start just with what your first impressions were, what it was that made you feel like, oh, there might actually be a larger film here. Yeah. You know, I remember about about three and a half years ago, I read this piece in The New Yorker, maybe you, you, you read it about, about, it was called Kuwait on the Prairie. And it was about one particular drilling rig and the very scientific process by which they were fracking for oil in North Dakota. It's a pretty interesting piece, and I read it. And But one thing that struck me about it was it presented the process as really quite, quite clinical and, and technologically sophisticated, which it is. But I, I, I felt like, where was the mess? You know, I, I had a sense that there was <clears throat> another dimension to the story. And this was a very narrow focus in, in the New Yorker piece. But and around that time, there were some other national um, there was national coverage of, of the North Dakota oil boom. And, and it had become the, you know, the, the bright spot in the American economy and the place where people were going to find work. And a lot of that coverage was also struck me as almost boosterish in, in presenting uh, these good jobs as there for the taking, which to some degree they are. But, but I just had a sense that, that survival, that life in North Dakota was, was a lot harder. And uh, so that's what sort of got me thinking about the potential to dig deeper. And, um, but what and was actually, it on, on, the, on the first trip that you took out when you out there, I mean, uh, describe a little bit of the first trip and what you saw and as you got back on the plane to go home after the first trip what it was that made you think oh maybe i should take a second trip again well actually i spoke to pastor jay before i ever got there because I, I read a clergy column that he published in the williston herald in which he called on the community to welcome the migrants the newcomers and i called him up and he he called well, actually he called me back i left him a message and we had a a conversation and he told me there there are men and women sleeping in my church and he was really quite open and inviting and and told me you should come and visit and so that was really the invitation that I needed and so when I got there I think one of the first things I ever did was go right to Jay's church and I tell you the moment I set foot in, in the church and I met him and I met some of the men who were staying there and I watched him interact with them I, it was electrifying and I felt like there's something happening in this little church that feels powerful. And I don't know what it is, and I don't know who he is exactly, but something's happening here. And, but I was hedging my bets, and I actually did cover a lot of ground in that first week-long shoot that I spent up there. And um, you know, was, I went to a campground where people were staying. I, I met business owners. It was sort of like a panoramic look at Williston. But, but, but Jay and the church is, is where I felt like, there was really something happening. And you, and you stayed in the church? When I got up there, I stayed in the church. I, I, um, 
Yeah, I, I you know, it, it was very expensive to find. I couldn't even find a hotel room actually at that point. They've since built a lot, a lot of hotels up there, but at the time, every hotel room in Williston was basically booked by an oil company. And I asked Jay if I could stay in the church. And I, I wasn't, you know, I felt a little uncomfortable asking him. Like I didn't want to put him on the spot. There were already too many people staying there. You know, I didn't want to be a burden myself, but. I really did need a place to stay. And uh, he said, of course. And he put me in the snorer's room at first, which was really terrible. And then <laughs> I moved it. I moved, I moved uh, into a, onto a cot in, in the hallway and then subsequently into a, into a, onto a couch. But, uh, but yeah, Jay, Jay was very welcoming to me and, and of course, to, to many people who came to him. So, And did that give you a way in to get people to talk to you? Do you think that they were more apt to talk to you because you had Jay's uh, approval? I, I, I think, so. yeah. I mean, I think in part it was that many people who came, they came alone and they came with very little and they were really just trying to survive. And I think that um, in that place, in the church, in that community, in the overnighters program, there was a lot of connection happening. I mean, Jay had really built a kind of community there and there was a lot of um, camaraderie and a lot of um, support. And I think that people opened up to me. Um, they opened up because they were just looking to make connections and to feel safe and to feel community. And I think they, they many, of, many of them, uh, I think they found it helpful to, to, to talk about themselves and where they'd come from and what they were looking for. So I did feel there was a lot of openness. It did help that Jay had taken me in and given me his blessing. Um, although l later in the process, he, he, he was, he, you know, he really did have to kind of fight for me to be there and in and, and, and particularly sticky moments. But, but at the time, I think in part, it was just being there and people were quite, you know, no, people were not wary. People were, were really open. But, you know, I wanted to, meant to go back to your first question, which was, I had never been to an oil boot. I've never been to a, I'd never been around the oil business. I've never been to a boom town. I, 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 I found the, the scale of the change, uh, astonishing and, and very intoxicating. I mean, to be in Williston, which, you know, is not, let's be honest, it's not the most beautiful small town, but, um, it, it's a kind of classic American small town in a way with it, its industry was agriculture. And suddenly, it was being ripped apart and reborn as this oil town. And I just like everything, the scale of the industry, um, you know, the, the, just the volume of, 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 of traffic, of people, of, of the massive machinery. I, I, I really, it was very overwhelming, but also somewhat intoxicating to me. Like I just thought, wow, you know, there's really, something happening here. It's huge. And I have no idea what it is. Um, but I want to get inside of it. I remember having conversations with you early on and then throughout about how to strike the balance in terms of what it was that you were interested in focusing on, because it was really clear from the outset that you had found a really fascinating character in Pastor Jay and, and a fascinating situation in terms of what was going on in his church, but also wanting to capture the larger story of of fracking and uh, you know it's it, it's interesting it was interesting for me to see how it developed and how you focused the story and as the story became more specific and in a way more microscopic it still was able to tell a larger story um almost by virtue of how specific and, and focused it is well i did struggle with that because I, I did have this idea that that a, a film about the North Dakota oil boom should should take place on a drilling rig. Like you should see men with big pipe jamming it into the ground. Like that that's what I thought the story should be in some way. And I did have to let go of that. And it wasn't easy. It took me a long time. Uh, I mean, I knew that I needed. A, 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 I mean, what what struck me about Jay immediately, which I I found compelling, was he had one foot in this new world of, of, of the overnighters, these men coming, and one foot in, in, in the community, in, in the church, in the, in the congregation. And he was really trying to do this straddle. And, and I could f see, and he, he really 
expressed how much pressure he felt trying to contain these forces. And here was so here was this man in the middle, and and I I, I mean I, I I saw the dramatic potential, and 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 I knew that that was a part of the story. But 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 then there was a part of me that was thinking, well, this is suddenly a story about a Lutheran pastor in this little church, and I'm not sure this can this can accom- this can um, this is that big film I'd imagine. Right. I, I mean, for me, it, when I watch the film, the thing that's so striking is that by focusing in on that story, you really get a sense of what, what we mean when we talk about the side effects of this boom and exactly what it's like for people who show up and what the challenges are. And well beyond the story of Jay, I feel like it, it turns out to be I mean, not surprisingly, you had a very good instinct, a, a really effective way in to what the lived experience is of the boom for the for these people who go there. No, and and, and that in that way, it was very it was true to what drew me to the story initially, which was what the other part of the, the missing part of the conversation for me, and in, in, in the big conversation about oil and energy ex- extraction, was the labor conversation because I felt like the fracking conversation. Has been really well and effectively explored in, in documentary, but but what about the human beings working in this industry that's suddenly delivering such promise and opportunity in America? Like, what's it like to be looking for work, finding work, working in this industry, and what does it do to you? What does it do to your family and to to communities that are transformed by this change? Which we seem to be at the uh, kind of the, the beginning of to some degree like we you know we, we went through this in pennsylvania and now in north dakota and, and in texas but it you know that the technology's unleashed a lot of possibility in the united states so i felt like it was about i mean i in the church it was about men coming and really coming up against the hard cold reality of finding work in 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 and surviving in north dakota so it was it was it was not radically far afield from what i was interested in. It was, you know, I, I guess part part of it for me is, I, you know, finding my way in, into this Lutheran church and suddenly being overwhelmed by church politics and the pastor's dilemma, you know, Christian kind of these big questions about his faith, you know, that, that was not what I expected, but, but, you know, I, 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 connected with him. And they also struck me as, well, you know, moral and, and kind of universal in, in, um, you know, not simply questions of what it means to, to lead a Christian life or to the Christian ethic or what it means to love thy neighbor. And, you know, in, in theological terms, but, but really in kind of universally moral terms, that's what, that's what kept me coming back to Jay and his, his struggle to, to help and house these men was like, I, I connected with it, not as a Christian, because I'm not, but just someone trying to do right and, and finding it very hard. Well, one of the things that happens in the film is that we discover uh, quite a bit about Pastor Jay and you unfold very organically, not just what happens to him, but who he is at, at, in many very complicated levels. And I'm just wondering, without giving away the ending of the movie, as it were, what that was like for you and whether were there junctures where suddenly you thought, oh my goodness, this is, this is something I hadn't realized about this person, or were there specific moments that were especially challenging to film? Yeah, well, so you, and you have an unusual vantage point because you're the only person who ever came up to North Dakota and met Pastor Jay when I was making this film. So you know that he has a kind of cheerful optimism, a kind of uh, public face that's you know, just, just, he's very upbeat. He's, he's relentlessly positive and, you know, and, and sort of open hearted, which is nice. But, you know, one of the things that Jay told me very soon after I met him was he said, no one has pure motives. And kind of beneath the public face, Jay presented to me in private that he was really struggling and that he had a a level of self-awareness um, about himself and his ego, his choices, 
um, the rec the recklessness of what he was doing that that really made me think he's a complicated person. Um, he's not presenting himself as a saint. Um, that I liked. He shared that with me, and, and and some of it on camera, some of it not. And I think that 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 kind of humility, and but balanced with his 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 ego, um, suggested that 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 there really was much more to him, um, and and his decisions and choices that he was making, and and so that that's, I, I guess. I, I found I, I found that very um, intriguing. But stylistically and ethically, you didn't. This wasn't the sort of film where you were like trying to to, to push him on camera or to ask him like the the hardball questions. Um, in many in many respects, I think one of the things that's interesting about the film is he really feels like you're just sort of allowing him to to display himself to us. Yeah. No. I I didn't push him. I mean, I think that we built a relationship and we had time. I mean, there was no, almost no external funding or support for the film. So that was hard, but also quite freeing for me. And I didn't feel any constraints um, uh, to, to kind of push, you know, and, and kind of get results. Like I just, I, I just, I just knew the program was going to, was going to not survive and, and the J might, might not survive with it. And I, but I didn't know how long that would take, but I was kind of, I, I was prepared to wait and see and, and to keep filming. And so with our relationship, you know, um, Jay and I, we, we, we come from very different places in many ways, but we, and, and we really got to, to be quite close. And I spent you know, I was living in the church for the first six months of production and, and at home with him a lot and in his in his office a lot, talking, sometimes with the camera, sometimes not. And 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 I think he we did grow to kind of really trust each other, but there were things that we didn't talk about. Um I think that and and they these things were never articulated in our relationship. I mean, you know, and I think maybe that's true in many kind of meaningful, deep relationships that some things need to be said and some things don't and some things are felt and expressed in other ways. And mm. I think that, you know, we didn't talk about politics. Um, Jay never tried to, um, you know, bring me into the church. Um, he really respected that I, he didn't, he never asked what my, if I was religious or what my upbringing had been. I mean, he really, I think he, 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 he kind of respected, um, that. And I respected, that that there was, you know, th there were things in his life that, um, and 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 and, you know, positions, political feelings that that you know we didn't need to talk about. I mean, there was a lot we did talk about. There was a lot we didn't. And I think that 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 is was kind of the foundation um, that the film rests on when it got much more intense and intimate. Um, that we we had kind of there. You know, I, I, nothing. It's not to say there weren't, you know, things that we had to kind of. We we did have disagreements, but um, but I felt like the relationship was given time to really develop. And I, I think Jay took he drew a lot of strength from the fact that I was there documenting the program. I mean, you know, he he really was cornered. He didn't have a lot of support. Um, certainly from the community, very little from his congregation. His family really did stand by him, but he felt isolated. And I think that he, without ever saying this, I think he 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 thought it was important that I was there documenting the program. And I thought it was important to be there documenting the program. And we didn't like talk about that, but it, I think he, and I never said, you know, I think in explicit terms, you know, uh, Jay, I think, I believe in what you're doing. I, I didn't say that, you know, I was just there and I, I, I was there because I, I really did believe in what he was doing. Yeah. I'm sure your, your, your camera was indicative of that. Aside from being in North Dakota briefly, I was also really happy to be at Sundance when you premiered the film and Jay was there. And I, I remember that that wasn't necessarily a foregone conclusion that, that he would be able to be there for that premiere and it might be interesting just to talk about once the film was completed what it was like to 
screen it publicly and and how it felt to have Jay watching it and responding to the audience. Well, it was it was it was terrifying. I mean, it, it was a, the premiere. Actually, we 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 we'd had a kind of a secret screening with volunteers two nights before the official premiere, and that helped me get over my nerves. But Jay wasn't yet there. He he actually didn't um, finally kind of decide to come to the premiere until the night before we premiered at Sundance, and and so there was a. I mean, I, I knew he was really trying to. Uh, he wanted to be there, but 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 life had gotten very complicated for him, and he 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 was kind of working it out with his family, and and so the decision was made very late. I mean, this is there was we'd had a very long conversation up until that point about about the film and about um, you know whether or not he he could be part of it, and I very much wanted him there, and I I think he really wanted to be there, but had to make sure he could be there in the right way. And, and so I, and I also said, look, Jay, I don't, I don't know how people are going to respond to this film, but I believe that there's a powerful message here and that, you know, despite the very painful experience you've gone through, um, which is unfolds at the end of the film, I, I, I think that the film will resonate and, and, and Jay's, you know, he's an optimist, he's brave and he took a real leap of faith and he came to Sundance and that was, that was I think, really affirming for him. And, um, the, the response was was, was moving. I think, you know, he was at like the lowest point in his life at that right, you know, before he came out there and, and, and suddenly he, he found that there was meaning, you know, the town of Williston would just, just as soon erase, has erased effectively the memory of the program and the program endures through the film. And I think that's important to him. I wanted to actually ask you, I mean, what, what, what was your experience like? I mean, what, what do you remember about sleeping in the, I mean, you slept in the church with me. We slept in the, I think it's called the family room. And I, I believe you slept on a couch in, in there with me. What, what was that like? I mean, what do you remember about that church? Uh, you know, and I always had this, I have a kind of romantic, I don't know, you, you may not have the romantic feelings about it that I do. Um, and, you, you know, and I, I mean, this, it smelled bad and, and it wasn't very comfortable. And, and, but but I, 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 and to me, it was, it was a kind of sacred place. Um, I just felt like there was so much life force contained in there. But what was your, what do you remember about actually staying there and, and, and the men who, you know, I mean, what, what was your take on it? I, if the thing that stood out to me was, was Pastor Jay. The, the men um, were, it was difficult because it, it felt like when we were there, when I, when I was there with you, I, it was, um, you know, I, I don't know how much time had passed since you had started shooting, but it, it wasn't like the parking lot was full and, and it was mm-hmm. full to the rafters with people. And so it had a little bit of a quality of, of despair and desperation. Um, and Jay really felt like he was the person who was, you know, maintaining some of these guys. Um, yeah. And, and it, it was quite honestly, it was, it was difficult. It was difficult to watch. Um, and I felt like I was seeing something that was um, that it was also at a crossroads for Pastor Jay because um, I think while we were there, he got a, a call from some other community. There was some question about, you know, the, Wilston had never had a homeless shelter and, and this was clearly not a homeless shelter and yet there were certain um, parallels. Um, and, yeah. and I think that was, that was, that was difficult. I don't think that was what his intention had been in terms of, you know, when he had started it. Um, yeah, it, it, it was difficult. Yeah. It was a challenging place. Yeah, I, I think you're right. I think at that point, you know, the wheels had really come off the bus and, 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 um, you know, a, as he had to kind of scale back the program, it, it lost some of its life force you know there were just fewer men there some of them had been there too long some of them weren't going to make it jay was really kind of holding on desperately because it was all he had i think and he knew when it went he'd probably go with it and and so you know i I mean when i first got there there was like an essentially an encampment in the parking lot and there was a kind of festive spirit that 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 kind of counterbalanced the desperation but, um, and, you know, he was constantly struggling with this question of like, tri- of triage, you know, of men who'd come who, who were looking for a place to stay, but who just, 
were either transient or like didn't have the skill set to, to make it. And he, you know, he, 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 his instinct was to help them, but, but he knew he couldn't help everybody. And, and there were just some guys, you know, who, who probably shouldn't have been there. Yeah. Who were hanging, hanging on. Yeah. Um, and so it, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know, it, it, maybe it never had that, um, you know, that romantic, um, glow, you yeah. know, one thing I, I wanted to mention to you that, you know, you met uh, Rich Vestal, you know, so one of the things I was struggling with was like, could I make this film really just about the program and, and Pastor Jay, which I ended up being able to do. But but to hedge my bets, I filmed these other characters, and one of whom was Rich Vestal, who's really the have to the have nots of, of the Overnighters program. And Rich was this local businessman who d- was doing extraordinarily, extraordinarily well. Uh, it, uh, in you know, shipping in fracking materials and shipping out oil. You met him, I guess, in the course of that Planet Money piece, right? Because uh, he was like one of the largest uh, homeowners in, in right. property owners in in in, in, uh, in Williston. Well, I don't know if you knew this, but Red River Supply blew up. Did I tell you this? It, no. It, it 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 there was like you know they had a <laughs> quite a number of combustible chemicals literally site. physically blew up oh my god it, it, i mean just it practically leveled like his entire yard i mean it was a huge it was a national story i mean it didn't destroy the whole company because it's it's kind of spread out over town but it was a huge I mean, ex- toxic clouds drifting i remember i remember a story about a huge explosion i didn't realize that that, that was. was red river supply it blew up i mean you know it's just that's the kind of place it is you know, and, and I, yeah, I mean, when I read, I, I got the news alert, yeah, there's an explosion in Williston and I, and I had this kind of sinking feeling, well, it was, it's either going to be a drilling rig, you know, but it was in the city of Williston and I thought, you know, it's going to be, you know, could be Red River Supply, sure enough. Anyway, that was, I, I mean, it was just, it was incredible. I mean, what, I, I mean, wow. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, I guess in a dramatic fashion, a reflection of, of, of that very combustible set of qualities that I found in Williston when I first went there that, you know, it really did, it really did echo this portrait. I, I, you know, this, you know, I'd, I'd look, I'd watched Deadwood, which, you know, is a total fiction, but like totally irresistible. And, 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 and but yet, you know, arriving in Williston, I, I suddenly understood something about, about the, the boom town and it's kind of, you know, it's, it's romantic, allure to people who are looking for forgiveness, redemption, salvation, opportunity, because it's, you think it's the place. Uh, I mean, these guys who came off the bus into the church, into Pastor Jay's church, I mean, they looked like they, they kind of stepped out of a Jack Kerouac novel or, you know, or, or like some frontier boom town of a hundred years earlier. I mean, they were like really guys with a bedroll. And, 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 I, you know, I found it very, uh, I mean, I, I respect that they'd come there to work, you know, and they, they might have made mistakes or had a criminal record or, you know, they were they were looking for for rebirth. And, and I mean, sort of sort of making that connection, you know, was was powerful to see it, I guess, kind of, you know, and it's it's non mythological, non fictional context. And, and I, I suddenly, you know, the boomtown sort of became a reality to me in a very interesting way. Yeah. That's that's and so is he. What's happened to him? To Rich? Yeah. I think he's rebuilding. You know, I, I mean, I. I, I <laughs> <laughs> that, that's the other side of his. That's the other side of the boomtown. Yeah. The, the boomtown portrait is, you know, is he is an indomitable spirit. You know, he's a gambler. And he's a he's a gambler. I mean, he was a gambler. Yes. Yeah. You well, know? And, he and kind he of got to me. Make, to, to make a huge fortune, but uh, yeah. you know, and Jay, Jay remains too. I mean, so many men that I filmed didn't survive and just didn't make it, and 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 didn't find what they were looking for. But but credit to Jay for, you know, life would be easier perhaps for him if he'd left Williston. But yeah. but it's but he's really challenged the community to to accept him, um, and uh, you know he he persists up there, and that's where the opportunity is. So right. Well, it's it's an amazing film, and I, I'm sure that as painful of a segment of a, of his life as it was, I have no doubt that he's proud that the film exists. And you can't watch the film and not have a tremendous amount of respect for what it was that he was trying to do, and and a lot of respect for your being there and 
being present to document it. I think it's it's a really valuable and important document of what it means to to rely on fossil fuels and to be uh, dependent on this sort of oil boom and and what it means. So my hand is off to you. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, Jay, he he used to say to me, you know, if if the if if, if he didn't, he would think it was a dream if he if he didn't have some record of it. And I said, no, Jay, you did it. You did those things. You know, it's real. It happened. So thank you, Josh. Well, thank you, Jesse. I hope everyone yeah. gets to see the movie. I hope so. Okay. <laughs> This is Nick Dawson from TalkHouse Film, and you've been listening to Josh Marston and Jesse Moss in conversation on the TalkHouse Film podcast, which was engineered and edited, as ever, by Elliot Einhorn. For more filmmakers talking film and TV, visit thetalkhouse.com slash film. Subscribe to TalkHouse Film and TalkHouse Music Podcasts on iTunes, where you can find all our previous episodes. And while you're there, please rate and review if you can.